Good evening, everyone. Welcome. Afreilich in Hanukkah. Thank you for joining us for the learning of Torah Hashem, Be'ezra Hashem Yisbrach, as we broadcast from our flagship station here in Agur Yisrael Beis Zev of Fairways Lakewood. And as always, we begin with Akar Satayv to TorahAnytime.com for giving us a global audience in 187 countries. We thank uh, equally, Kalaloshin it makes this share available to its massive audience of people that don't use more modern technology and are still listening to the shiurim on the good old phone. Uh, we welcome those on uh, Torah Communications Network, uh, my subscribers, uh, those on uh, YouTube and elsewhere. Uh, our Zoomers, thank you for joining us. Tonight's shir is being sponsored by a very dear uh, Talmud of mine, uh, A.B. Spry, who is a Talmud of mine way back from the Good Israel of 14th Avenue by my daf. And he's sponsoring tonight's shir, Lili Nishmas, his mother, Esther Pessel, Bas Yitzchak, and Neshama should have an aliyah. She should have for a family, for all of us, and all of Klal Yisrael. Um, you know, this Shabbos is a very rare Shabbos. This Shabbos, Parshas Miketz, falls out, and it's not Hanukkah. It's a near miss, right? Zeis Hanukkah is over. Friday, and uh, Shabbos is not Hanukkah anymore. Parshas Miket is almost always on Hanukkah. They always talk about the seven cows, right? Uh, that it represents the seven branches of the Menorah. Right? There's all kinds of talk about it. And here, Miket is not on Hanukkah. So I want to tell you something that's rather sobering. The next time that we will have such an event that Parshas Miketz is not Hanukkah is in 2040. 17 years from now. That's right. The next time it will be happen is in 2040 17 years from now. Now, that got me thinking. I'm 65. The next time Miketz won't be Hanukkah, I'll be 82. That's, uh, that's a sobering thought. Now, if somebody is listening now, and he's 80, Mo is 96. The next time, it falls out, it'll be 113. That's a, that's, a, that's a sobering thought. And it got me thinking how we have to learn to ask Hashem that we should live long. It says, Hayaroich, the Chaverim of Eiv said to Eiv, Hayaroich Shuacho Shaloi Batsar. Did you arrange your prayers before you had trouble? Don't wait till things start failing. Still the heart becomes weak. The eyesight becomes weak. Rather, a person should pray to live long. Now, in Nusach Svard, those that have a Nusach Svard, it, it's very easy to pray for life. They have it clearly in their Shemayin Esri. It says, Sim Shalom. And Sim Shalom, it says, to ask for Chayim. But if you look at Nusach Ashkenaz, we don't say Chayim. We say, Sim Shalom, Toivo Vracha. 
We don't say Chaim Chain Vachesed. We don't say Chaim. You look it up, Nusach Sraad, they ask for Chaim outright. But Nusach Ashkenaz does not ask for Chaim. You'll say, why not? I mean, that's the first thing to ask for. The answer is, is there is a viewpoint that for something so important as life, we don't want to ask for it outright. Because that's the Sutton blocks such tefillahs. He's looking to block it. He's looking to be a Mesach HaMavdal. He says, ah, you're listening to him? He's, his mouth says, Lashon Hara, ain't kateger nasas And he doesn't, he doesn't accept such a request. He doesn't, doesn't accept it. So therefore we try to sneak it in. So where do we sneak it in? So it's interesting, in Sim Shalom, we ask Hashem, Borcheinu avinu kulanu ke'echad ba'or panecha. Bless us, our Father, all of us as one, ba'or panecha, with the light of your countenance. What does that mean, the light of your countenance? What that means is, is that we're asking Hashem, as the Siddur Mephorish explains, ba'or panecha, we're asking Hashem that He should smile at us. That's, what, that's the meaning. Hashem should smile upon us. The cinema first says, B'panim seichakais. With a smiling face. With a laughing face. And what happens if Hashem smiles on us? So we say it in Sim Shalom. Ki ba'ar panechon asatel on the Torah's chayim v'avaskeset tzedakah v'raka v'rachamim v'chayim v'shalom. Now even the Sakashkana says that. Because with our panecha, we get Chaim and Shalom. So here's where we sneak it in. We stick it in and we say, Ah, the, 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 the uh, Sutton here is a shining countenance. He doesn't pounce on that. But really, the our panecha is that everything, when Hashem smiles at us, we get Chaim, we get Shalom, we get Rachamim. So this is a very good place every day to daven for Chaim, to daven for life. You should know that this is a Pusik that in, in Tehillim, the Pusik says in Tehillim, in Perik Beis, Pusik Chaf, it says, Hashem Alikim Tzvakais, Hashem, the Lord of Hosts, Hashivenu, return to us. Hoyer ponecha, shine your countenance v'niva sheya, and we will be saved. Now, by the way, I love this. You know, you know, in Oisius Rebbe Kiva, there's a medrash Oisius Rebbe Kiva, where Rebbe Kiva dash in the letters. So, Samach Ayin, he explains simonim also. It's also Gemara in Shabbos. Make simonim for yourself. The pasuk. Is Perek Bey's Pasuk That's Pach. That's the Pach Shemen. When we found on Hanukkah the Pach Shemen, Hashem was smiling at us. Can you imagine the Yavanim set to be Metame? Every single uh, fl uh, flask so that we shouldn't be able to light the menorah, the symbol of the Jews. We shouldn't be able to light it. And the Rebbein Shem smiled at us and we found the Pach Shemen. That's Perek Pei. Pasikhaf, that's Hashivenu, to return to us, Har Panecha. Now, another place that, as I said, somebody that's 80, Pashas Mikates, doesn't fall on the comic, it'll be 97 in 2040. So, the truth of the matter is, is we pray that we should stand to greet the Mashiach. That's what we say. There are some people that are going to come to Eretz Yisrael rolling under the ground. But we ask all the time in Ava Rab or Ava Salem, let's go there standing. We should live to greet the Mashiach. And the truth of the matter is, this is also a big feeler that we say in Ovalet In Ovalet we say, 
Yiratzam lefanecha Hashem alekeinu velekeha v'kseinu Shenishma rechukecha ba'olam hazeh We should keep your mitzvahs in this world V'nizke v'nichye We should merit to live v'nira to see v'nira sh'tayva uvracha l'shnei yamay sa'mashiach We should live and get good and enjoy blessing. The Yemaisa Mashiach. So we're davening. We should live. And then also we say also we want a good portion. May it be the will that all of us should be with Gesund on this festival of lights. Hashem should glow His smile upon us. We should all live to greet the Mashiach. Tonight's share is going to revolve around two psukim. Two fast, you know me. I'm very fascinated by names. By Yikra Yosef Hashem Abachar Menashe. Yosef Atzadik called the name of his firstborn Menashe. Now, one of the things, one of the uh, purposes of names is for thanks. And they wanted to have, whenever they, during the course of our raising our children, we call their names often. So we want to have uh, an opportunity to give a lot of thanks. So we give a name so that each time we say the name, we're giving thanks. So, why did Yosef call his son Menashe? Ki nashani elikim es kol amoli. Because Hashem helped me forget all my toil. Ves kol beis avi. And my father's house. Forgot my father's house. So, everybody asks the same question. What's Yosef thinking that he forgot his father's house? To the contrary. The only way he escaped from the wilds of one of the greatest temptresses in the history of mankind, the beautiful wife of Potiphar, the only way he didn't succumb, you have to realize that Yosef was alone for many years. He was, <laughs> he was alone. He was sold into slavery. He was alone. And she tempted him every day. She changed many, many times. And her husband, it says her husband was a Mishkiv Zachernik. So she was herself a desperate woman. And uh, she really, really tempted and she was really beautiful. So it says that he didn't succumb because he saw Dmus Dyukna Ishalaviv. He saw the image of his father. So how can he say thank you that I forgot Beis Avi? To the contrary. It was the constant memory of Beis Avi that saved him. What kind, of a, what, what kind of a name is that? Not only that, but we would think that the thinking of the wonderful times with his father and with his family and with his Zayda Yitzchak that gave him strength. What do you mean I forgot my father's house? Furthermore, his second son he named Ephraim. Ki Ephrani Elikim Be'eretz Onyi. That Hashem allowed me to have children in this land of affliction. We would think that when naming a child, that would be first. The fact that he found a Shidduch, as we will see, there was really no Jewish Shidduch in the Mitzrayim. And we're going to see that the Lesad in Avosecha, the Avosecha says that Osnas was a islandess. So it was a great miracle that she had a child. So we would think he would call his first child Ephraim. Kefrani. Why did he call first? What was so pressing that he forgot Beis Avi? So there's a wonderful sefer called Beis Pinchas. And the Beis Pinchas says 
that he was thanking Hashem that he was able to forget what his brothers did to him. He was able to forget that they stripped him of his clothing. They lowered him into a pit of snake and scorpions. They sold him to Midianites into perpetual slavery and beschanin him a love. When he begged them, they didn't heed his cries. He was able to forget it. The, the base Pinchas tells us that if you embarrass someone, as long as the person feels hurt and shame from your embarrassment, then the person that did the embarrassing is still punished for the crime. If the person puts it out of his mind and says, you know, forget about it. Let, let, let me forget about it. Then the embarrasser is not punished anymore. And that's the way it works. That as long as a person feels yet a uh, taina, a hurt, then the one who did the avla, the one who did the crime, is still punished. Yosef didn't want the brothers to be punished. So he attempted to put out of his mind the hurt, the loss. And he's giving All my toil that I was sold into slavery. That I missed 10 of Binyamin's weddings. That I don't get a chance to continue learning my, with my father. I was a Ben Zekunim. And he was able, he was, thank you, thank you Hashem. I was able to forget it. So that now all my brothers are not going to be punished anymore. And it's interesting. We know one of the handbooks of many of the Minhagim that we do in Shul is the Mata Ephraim. On the, the footnotes of the Mata Ephraim is a very chosh of a sefer called Elef Lemogen. Elef Lemogen is a... Uh, is, is, is a, um, a safer on the matter of Ephraim. Footnotes on the matter of Ephraim. So he brings a Maisa with the Orachayim HaKadosh that a wealthy person one time uh, insulted very badly a Talmud Chochem. And it was in the presence of, of the Orachayim HaKadosh. The Orachayim HaKadosh asked the Talmud Chacham, to be Meichel. And the Talmud Chacham said, of course, he was Meichel right away. Why? Listen to what he said. He was Meichel right away because if he wasn't, the person would be considered a sinner. And when the Yid is a sinner, there's Tsar HaShchina. There's the distress of the Shchina. And he didn't want to prolong the distress of the Shechina, so he was Michael right away. I mean, this is, you know, this is really lofty stuff. Somebody hurts you and does something wrong to you. You want to be Michaelim because if you're not Michaelim, then the person is a sinner and that causes Sarah Shechina. But Yosef was on this level. And Yosef was able to, 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 to forgive him Ki nashani Hashem es kol amoli, uh, so that 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 I, that the person shouldn't be a sinner and cause tzara shchina, and that the person shouldn't still be punished for what he did to me. It's interesting that the Shefa Chaim, the Chetzav Kodesh Lachas Chus Yagen Aleinu, the Freya Dika Close in the Bigger Rebbe, in the Shefa Chaim he writes. That Yosef aspired to the Midah to be Mavra al Midaisa. It's called Mavra al Midaisa, Michael and Leal Kola by Naisa. So therefore, he wanted not to have a Taina and to be able to look away. That's the meaning of Mavra al Midaisa, to look away. And Hashem allowed him to look away. Kinashani. It says, Kinashani, Elikim has Kola Manli, all that which they did to me. 
That's called Beis Avi, the fact that I missed out on so much, and he never saw Yitzhak again. Yitzhak passed away, he never saw him again. Never saw Yitzhak again, he never saw Zayda again. Now, but there's a big cash. If it's a good thing that he forgot, then why does it say Kinashani Elikim? Elikim is Midas Adin. It should say Kinashani Hashem is Kol Amoli, that's Kol Beisavi. That Hashem with his Rachamim allowed me to forget. That would make sense. But it doesn't say that. It says Kinashani Elikim. It doesn't say Kinashani Hashem. So you could say that what allowed him to forget is the new tzaras he had. He was so busy in the house of Petifar and, 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 and with the temptress, the wife, and, 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 and in the base of Sawyer, in the prison, that he forgot. But what caused him to forget is his tzaras, Kineshani Elikim. But I think that there's a different shot. I, th- I think, you know, it says Kineshani Elikim, what Yosef did was, is he, how did he forget what the brothers did? By saying to himself, it didn't happen because of, because of them. It happened because I deserved it. I spoke a Dibara. I made them jealous with the dreams. Shkinashani alikim, the fact that I deserved midas alikim. I deserved me to say, Din, Loyatem Shlachtem Oisiena. Kiyam Alikim, Alikim. So that's Kineshani Alikim. The, 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 the fact that he said, Oh, I understand that it's a me to say, Din, it's not because of them. That's how he was able to forget. However, there's something else here. In the name Manasha, Kinashani alikim es kol amoli ves kol beisavi. This is a completely different haidah, Tasha. You know, I was always amazed. And now, of course, as I'm older, and I appreciate it more, I was always amazed at my father, Oliver Shalom, Rabbi Tzvi ben Rameyer, that he was on the, on, the, on the first day or second day of Shavuos, second day of Shavuos, first day of Shavuos, it's a machlokes in the family. From the second sailor should transport, his father, mother, four brothers, and one sister were gassed on one day. He became a double orphan, lost four brothers and a sister in one day. And then he lived through Auschwitz, the hell of Auschwitz, and then the hellish death march from Auschwitz till he was liberated by the Americans. He was all of 16 years old. And yet he was able to give us a normative American upbringing full of baseball cards and taking us to arcades on a Sunday, buying us hardy boy books, all kinds of American simple things. You, you would think a person that was so traumatized, there's a special gift to be able to go on and not to be stuck in the past. The Grizz told someone that during the Shaya, that's Yitzhak Zev Salvation, told someone that during the Shaya, he didn't know his family's whereabouts for several years. He said that normally, if he was expecting to hear by letter, by post, 
from one of his family, and he didn't hear. He, he, he got all worried. And here he didn't hear from his family for years and he was able to continue learning. That's a special bracha. That's the bracha of shikha. And that's the thanks that Yosef gave. Kinashani elikim es kol amoli ves kol beis avi. That Hashem allowed me to forget that I was able to go on. And that comes even before naming that he had a child. Because to be able to be a good marriage partner, to be able to have a normal life, you have to be able to forget to go on. That's the bracha of shikha. We have to know that shikha was created. The original world plan did not have forgiveness. They did not have forgetfulness. The original world plan, the original design, was that there wouldn't be forgetfulness. Adarabah, we don't want to forget our taira. We don't want to forget not to be grateful. The original plan was to be, there was to be no forgetfulness. The Rabbi Nishlam created forgetfulness only after the sin. Because now that there's death, in order to be able to move on, how can somebody move on? They lose a spouse, Leilena. How could they move on? They lose a child. How could they move on? So the Rabbi Nishon created Shikha. And that's the famous Sheva uh, Taira. It's a very big Yisait. When we say in the Bracha, Sameach to Samach Reyem Ahuvim, you should be very joyful, your beloved friends, like you, Hashem, caused to rejoice your creation in Gan Eden. So we're wishing the Chassan and Kala, the Rei Ma'uvim, that they should be as joyous as Adam and Chav. That's a questionable bracha. There were no guests at Adam and Chava's wedding. There were no parents. Forget about grandparents. There weren't even parents. By the wedding, there were no... There, were, there, were, there, were, there was no uh, human interference. What kind of a bracha is that? But the bracha is that it was before the sin. And before the sin, there was no shikha. So we're giving a bracha to the chasen and kala that their simcha should never be forgotten. When that joy was not to be forgotten. Shikha was created. You see, Shokach is reverse of Choshech. And Shokach allows us to forget that which is dark. That's, that's, that's the purpose of Shikha. And Yosef at Tzadik is giving a bracha to the Rabbi Nishalayim. Ki nashani alikim es kol amon liv ves kol beis avik. The Rabbi Nishon wants us to forget and go further. Unfortunately, if a parent loses a child and they hold on and they refuse to be comforted, it's a dangerous thing. The Rabbi Nishon, we should never be tested. I always felt that I inherited from my father, Allah Shalom, the gift of be, being able to get past tragedy. When I lost my uh, first rabbit in her yard site is this Sunday night, the sixth yard site, it was completely overwhelming. But Hashem gave a blessing that I should be able to forget enough to be able to go on. And this is something that we know many people after the Holocaust were so traumatized that they couldn't go on. And actually that's what happened to Elisha ben Avuya, the mayor's rebbe, Elisha ben Avuya. It's brought down, he became Acher. So it's brought down that he saw two traumatic 
episodes. Yerushalmi tells us that he saw the great Marvitz Taira Chutzpah Amaturgaman. He was murdered and he saw a pig dragging his tongue through the dirt. And he said, Peh, the mouth that was Mapik Margolia should be pulled by a pig. It blew all his fuses. And he also saw a boy climb a tree on the midst of his father to bring down the eggs. And he did Kibbut of Aim and Shluch Hakan, the two mitzvahs that promised Arichas Yamim, and the boy fell from the tree, and that blew all of his circuitry. Couldn't get beyond it. The bracha of, that Yosef gave is Kinashani Elikim as Kol Amoli as Kol Beis Avi, that I was able to go on. That's the bracha of Shikha, like the Grizz says. But we should know that the Torah is Nidresh as B'Shivim The Torah is understood 70 different ways. Now I, I've, I made a bracha already. I've explained that sometimes a child comes to the Seder table and hears many pshatim. And the child, after a while, says, I'm not even going to listen. There's this pshat, that pshat, they can't all be right. So <laughs> most of them are wrong. It's not that way. The idea is, is they're all right. Kipatish yifutsa It's like when a, a hammer goes down on a rock and many sparks come out. The Torah is nidrash in many ways. And I remember that uh, I saw that Chevrolet came out with a car that was called the Beretta. Now, for those that know, the Beretta is a famous gun. And they were promptly sued by the gun company. That they took their name. So the think tank of Chevy wrote a pamphlet, I saw the pamphlet, where they gave 72 reasons why they called the car Beretta. Seems to me there was a, a big movie out at the time where the star of the movie was Berletta, a dog. And it sounded like that star. They had 72 reasons why they called it Beretta. And I said to myself at the time, if Chevy could have 72 reasons, it's not a, a leap to say that the Rabbi Nishlam has 70 reasons for saying things in the Tyre. Of course, it's 70 on the, just the level of Pshat, this Pardis, this Pshat, Rebesh, Drush, Said. And then, of course, that's just basic. That's not the Sisriat Tyre. Ain Chekel Lismunasa. The Torah is infinite. I say that because now we're going to see that in Boratius Rabbah, there's a totally different direction of why he was called Menashe. It says, Kinashani Alikim es Kolamoli, says the Medrish in Bereshis Rabba. If you want to look it up, it's Pei Vav Hey. She Yosef Chayzer al Talmudai. Yosef would constantly review his learning, but because of his Saris Vishachai, he forgot it. And that's the meaning of Kinnashani Elikim es Kol Amoli. My Amoli was Amel. What's, what was Yosef's Amoli? Amel Shotair. And Kinnashani Elikim es Kol Amoli. And now here, by the way, Elikim fits in very well. Amoli, Elikim means Amidas Adin, because of all my suffering, I forgot Amoli. Es Kol Beis all what I learned. In my father's house, remember, he was called a ben zikunim because kol ma'ashe lamad b'shem ve'aver mosaloi whatever Yaakov learned in shem ve'aver he gave to him and Yosef was saying that I forgot my learning so you'll say if that's the case that's a bad thing why did he name his son after it so says Rebbe Yosef 
That Yosef kept on working. The fact that he forgot it, he kept on working. He kept on working at it. And to the contrary, he gave his son the name Menashe so that he should remember that he forgot it, that he needs to recover it. That's no Kiddush because Menashe is the same letters as Mishnah to learn. And also it's the same letters as Neshama because it's the purpose of life. So he wanted to remember that he has to recover his learning. We have to know, you'll say, but what about all that wasted time, all that learning and forgetting, all that learning and forgetting? A person shouldn't say, al timer likisha esh, efne eshne. Don't say when I'm more settled, I'll learn. This is learning on the run is ridiculous. Now the simple meaning is true. Maybe you'll never get the chance. I can tell you, I can't tell you who, but I can tell you I had a dear Talmud that was a man of great industry. And he did a, it's a big bal tzedakah. He told me, Rabbi Weiss, you might not believe this, but I plan one day to sit and learn the whole day. But not yet, I have things to do. And I really believe he planned to, except that he got cancer and he died. I'll tell you, Malikisha Efna Eshna, when I get a chance, because Shemalay Tipana. But there's another pshat, a very great pshat. Don't say when you get a chance you'll learn. Maybe Hashem wants the learning of when you don't have the chance. Maybe Hashem wants that learning in difficult times. I remember one time, my Rebetzin, her platelets went down to such a dangerous level. It was, it was unbelievable that they told me you have to take her to the emergency room. And at that time she had a doctor in Maimonides and the emergency room in Maimonides was a zoo. And my wife was so barely, barely, she was so fragile. So I remember I had pull and there was a room there in the back all the way in the back. It was a zoo there. It was such a zoo. There's a room in the back for a person that had an infectious disease so that they should be in, in isolation. And the pull that I had got us that room. And it was screaming the whole time. And I remember that I had to prepare a shear. So it was the middle of the night in this place. I'm worried about my wife. I remember preparing the shear. I remember thinking that's the kind of learning we should never know but that's the learning of Hashem that's a very special learning Lefum Tzara Agra should never have to know from it so Yosef HaTzadik over here gave a name that to remind him Hashem caused me to forget my toil by learning. I need to recover it. Now it's interesting. Who got this name? Menashe. Remember, Menashe was not the one that learned. Menashe was the one that worked in the palace. And it's fitting for him this name. Don't forget about your learning. It's a name of Mishnah, a name of Neshama. Don't forget, don't because of your business, don't forget that you have to learn. And now we come to the next name. I told you the share is going to be about two names. Before we uh, go any further, I want to remind everybody that's listening that you could sponsor these shiurim. Uh, that's what keeps everything going. Uh, to sponsor is 718-916-3100. R-M-M-W-S-I at AOL.com. Uh, you could also sponsor the Chag Shirim, or a Daf, or for the Shabbos table. 
So the next name, the Eshema Sheni, his second child, Kor Ephraim. Ki Ephraim Yelikim Be'eretz Oni. Because Hashem allowed me to be fruitful in the land of my affliction. So first we should know that there's a fascinating Dazakain. The Dazakainim says it, and so does Rabbeinu Bachya. Rabbeinu Bachai. That Ephraim is afer pluralized. Ash pluralized, right? Aleph Pei Reish is afer Yud Mem. So Ephraim is afer Ephraim. No, it's a plural of ashes. What does that mean? Says the Dazakanim, says Rabbeinu Bachya, that Yosef named his second son after Avram and Yitzchak. Avram, who would have been Ash at Ur Kazdim when he was put into the Kipshan Aish by Nimrod, so naturally he would have been Ash. That's why he said, Anoichi offer the Afer, because I would have been Ash. And Yitzchak, who is considered before Hashem as if his Afer, his Ash, is on the Mizbeach. And therefore, those are the two Afer. Afer with a Yud Mem, which is pluralized. He named them Ephraim after the Schus of Avram and the Schus of Yitzchak. Adds the Dazakain and Balitaisvis. This is so precious before Hashem that Klal Yisrael is, in general is referred to by the name of Ephraim in the Pasuk Haven Yaker Li Ephraim. Like a precious son to me, Ephraim. Now what's this referring to? This is referring to the Mida of Klal Yisrael of Mesiris Nefesh. Just like Yitzchak was Moser his Nefesh to be slaughtered on the Akeda. And just like Avram was Moser Nefesh to uh, go into the Kifshan Aish, Klal Yisrael is precious to Hashem because of our Mesiris Nefesh. Haven Yaker Li Ephraim, there's a special love Hashem has for us because we're Mesiris Nefesh. Now you'll say, everybody's Mesiris Nefesh. Everybody. Klal Yisrael is Am Shecha. We're all busy with Mesiris Nefesh. Person takes a day off, or he finally, after working, he has time and he comes to learn. So many people are Mesir Nefesh to learn. What about the fact that people, everybody, every year, sends their children to Yeshiva? Look at the price of tuition. It's unbelievable. You have young children barely able to afford the rent and they pay unbelievable prices for tuition. A guy sends his ch children to public school for free. It's an amazing mysterious nefesh. On behalf of all of Kali I know, I remember in, in my shul, I this shul, wonderful shul, I this shul of Staten Island, many school teachers. And they looked at their uh, colleagues that were going. And they're going on vacations, they're riding fancy cars, because all their children go free tuition. While, while the Jewish teachers are barely making it because of the tuition. That's a nation of mysterious nefesh. What about the mysterious nefesh of not daydreaming during davening? but keeping attention and concentration on what you're saying, even though it's early in the morning or it's late in the night. That's mysterious nefesh. Or what about mysterious nefesh walking in the street or walking in the mall and not looking at all the eye candy that's around? That's mysterious nefesh. Klal Yisrael is a nation of mysterious nefesh. You have a good piece of gossip. Oh boy, it's so juicy. You can't say it. 
Or you can't listen to it. You want to know what went on? Oh, no, I can't. That's my serious nefesh. Or what about giving tzedakah? Here a person, he barely has, and he has a little extra money, he wanted to buy himself something. And said he gives it to tzedakah. We're a nation, that's Haven Yakir Li Ephraim. That's the Afer of Avram, the Afer of Yitzchak. So you'll say, Rabbi, why? He said, I mean, you, you, don't compare Avram and Yitzchak. They were ready to give up their lives. Yeah, you know, give some tzedakah, you know, pay attention to davening. Don't, don't, don't compare. You're comparing apples to oranges. No, no. I'm not. I'm not. I told you this before. I remember it so vividly that the year of 9-11 at the Agudin Convention, there was a session. It was a Thursday night session. And they showed the, the video of the planes hitting the towers. And afterwards, Rev. Wolfson spoke. And he said that it says Hashem always makes an equal kayach of Tumah and a kayach of Kedusha. He says if there are Arabs that are willing to obliterate themselves, to mamish go into a building and cause themselves to, to be obliterated, vaporized, so there's Messiris Nefesh to kill for Tumah. There has to be an equal Messiris Nefesh for Kedusha. And Rav Wilson said that doesn't mean we have to kill ourselves. Because Mali Kotla Kula, Mali Kotla Palga. It means Messiris Nefesh. There's Messiris Nefesh by us. That's the two Afers. That's the, that's, that's the Pshat in the Ephraim. Now, it's possible that Yosef, in giving the name, um, also was invoking his mysterious nefesh. His mysterious nefesh that he didn't succumb to the wife of Petifa, so much so that he knew another second he would have lost. So he left his garment in her hand, which damned him and got him arrested. Whether it's the fact that he resisted sending word to his father that he was alive so that his father shouldn't curse the brothers. But now I'm going to tell you something else. He called Ephraim ki Ephrani alikim be'eretz onye. I'm going to tell you now an amazing Ramami panu. Now it's not just a Ramami panu. I found it in the Ramah Mepanu later on. There, it's also in the Sefer Or Pnei Moshe, an ancient Sefer, Or Pnei Moshe. Ephraim and Asher, first of all, al the Medrash, were twins. That's why it says, Asher Yulad Le Yosef. It doesn't say twice, Vatar Vatelet. They were twins. The Ramah Mepanu brings down Me'agoda, from a medrash, although we don't know which medrash it is. But Ramah Mipanu says that really, this is really amazing, Ephraim and Manasseh was supposed to be born from Yaakov and Bila. They were supposed to be born from Yaakov and Bila the night that Ruvain was Bilbil Yitzue Yavif. And in order to defend his mother's honor, he took the marital bed out of uh, Billah's tent and brought it to Leah's tent. And therefore that night that Yaakov was supposed to sleep with Billah and have uh, Ephraim and Manasseh, he didn't get a chance. And it says in the Agadah that the Neshamas of Ephraim and Manasseh already came down and they were stored 
in the Ganeiden Hatachtain until they were born from Yosef and Osnas. It's a, a, a remarkable thing. Now, I'm not going to. I'm not going to tell you that anybody says this, but you know me, I look at a name, Ephraim, and in the name Ephraim I see right away pre aim the fruit of the mother. Because really, who was Yosef's mother? Of course, his mother was Rachel. But who raised Yosef as a mother? Bila. That's why she was Yireach. She was the moon in Yosef's dream. Because she raised him like a mother. And really, Bila was supposed to be the mama. That's why it's called Priyam. And, and there's, many, there's many proofs to this, because if you, it, it, there's a famous Pasuk, Vayishkav es Bila Pelegesh Aviv, Vayishma Yisrael, so it says that, that Ruvain slept, with Vayelch Ruvain, Vayishkav es Bila Pelegesh Aviv, Vayishma Yisrael, and then it says, in the same Pasuk, there's a parsha in between, but the same Pasuk, Vayu B'nei Yaakov Shnei Mosek. Now what does that mean? It says that he, uh, he slept with her, which means that he mixed the bed. But what does it mean, Vayu B'nei Yaakov Shnei Mosek? So Rashi says it means that it don't think that he actually committed adultery. They were still 12. He was a tzaddik like the rest of them. But now it fits in very good. The result was it's only 12. If he wouldn't have been Bilbel, the Yitzhua, it would have been 14. It would have been Ephraim and Menashe. But now it's only 12. Also, um, I don't know if it's it also fits in good that it also fits in why Yaakov said, Ephraim of Menashe Keruvim the Shimon Yuli. You know why? Because they were, f- first came down with Yaakov and Bila. So they were, Ephraim of Menashe were Keruvim the Shimon Yuli. I would also like to suggest that the Rabbi Nishlam wants to tell us that don't think that in Ephraim and Menashe there is residuals of Shechem. Because we know that Shechem raped Dina and had Osnas and Osnas married Yosef and had Ephraim and Menashe. So Abba Pasht is the Zayda with Shechem. So you'll say in Ephraim and Menashe two of the Shvatim there's Shechem. Shechem was a monster. So first of all, that could explain why Osnas was an islandess. Osnas is an islandess, then it's miraculous. The purpose of it being miraculous is it disconnects from the genealogy. But also now we see that these Nishamas came originally for Yaakov and Bila. And that disconnects it from Shechem. So, this, so that's one shot in Ephraim pre But there's something else here. Why does it say Elikim again? You had, uh, you had children. Kifrani. You should say Kifrani Hashem Eretzani. The same Kasha. It's Gavaldik. He had children. Such a Midas Arachamim. Why does it say Kifrani Elikim Eretzani? So here I believe that Yosef is thanking Hashem. Here he is in an Eretz Shtufe Zima, in a land which is promiscuous and lewd. He's in a land of black magic, a, bla- a land where the Jews sunk to the 49th degree of Tuma, a land where it says, Anivalei Manach, Anivalei Saraf, and the Mephoshim say, that the Malachim and the Srafim didn't want to come because even they would be affected by the Toma. Where is Yosef going to get a Shidduch in such a, in such a land? Where is, where is it going to come from? And what did the Rabbi Nishan do? The Rabbi Nishan sent him down a granddaughter of Yaakov. 
a granddaughter of it was amazing Dina's daughter sent him down but how did she come down uh, with Mida Sadin Dina had to be raped at the time when Osnas was born posthumous to the death the murder of Shrem the killing of Shrem by Shimon Alevi it says the Shvat wanted to kill Osnas and Yaakov didn't let them he sent her down to Egypt with a Kamea. The Kamea said, Ani Osnas Bastina Basyaka. What happened was, is it says that when Yosef was appointed viceroy and Bonas Tsoadale sure they were throwing things at Yosef. So she threw the Kamea. And that projectile hit Yosef. He opened it up. He said, Ani Osnas Bastina Basyaka. Girl! So Kifrani Elikim Beretz Anya was a tremendous, tremendous chesed of Hashem, but it came about through an Elikim, through Amida Sadin. That's why, by the way, Ephraim is also pre aim The fruit of the mother, meaning Asnas. You see, Yosef wouldn't be alive if it wouldn't be for Asnas. It says that when, when, uh, the wife of Petifer accused Yosef of trying to rape her. That's what she accused. She said, look, I have his garment. If, if, if I was trying to do it, he, he's stronger than me. Why would I have his garment? It must be he tried to overpower me. Right? So, and, and we know that nobody was in the home because it was their holiday, it was their church. But there was one person home because remember, Osnas didn't go. She was a, a, a yid. So she didn't go to the church. So she was a witness. And that's why she was, we know she was called Asnas. The main reason why she was called Asnas is to make it clear that there was no consensual relationship between Dina and Shechem. That's why she was called Asnas. She was a child of Asan, of rape. But she was also called Asnas. Asnas is the letter of Anasta. You were forced. And she gave testimony that was Yosef that was forced. And that it was the wife of Petifa that tried to take advantage of him. And therefore she saved Yosef's life with her testimony. That's why they only put him in the base of Soya. And that's why Ephraim is pre aim the fruit of the mama. Of Asnas. It was a very, a, a very big thing. Now, we're, tra we're translating now, Ki Efrani Elikim, the Eretz Onyi, is that Hashem gave me a Shidduch. The actual birth, and what does it have to do with Eretz Onyi? To the contrary, when they were born, Yosef was already viceroy. She was living like a Malka. So what's the Efrani Eretz Onyi? It means that I had the ability because you gave me a shidduch. And we should know a lot of times the schoolers that we say that we should use to have a child, those same schools we should use to get a shidduch. Like for example, it says by Manishtana, Kana Ben Shoya. Because here is a place that's Masugal to ask for a child to fulfill Manishtana, to fulfill Vigat Tal Vincha. The Ger Rebbe used to tell uh, Bachrim that are old, Kana Ben Shal, here's a place to find a shidduch that you should have a child. Kifrani Elikim, there it's on you, means Hashem help me find a shidduch. I see we're already at 59 minutes. I thought that maybe I didn't prepare enough. But I want to tell you one more thing about Kifrani Elikim, there it's on you. And that's what the Targum Yonisim Ben Uziel says. It takes it a different meaning. He doesn't translate Hifrani as fruitful. He says, Arum Omar, Takif Yossi Hashem Ba'ara Segufai. Hashem made me strong in the land of my affliction. Vachin Osid Lemitkaf Beis Abba Hocha Besigufayim. And in the future, Hashem will also make the Bnei Yisrael strong when they're being inflicted 
afflicted by the taskmasters of Egypt. In the Pirish on the Tag Miyadisin, he says that over here he's not translating Ifrani as being fruitful, but as being strong. So it could be that Yaisa was thanking Hashem that he was strong against the wife of Patifa. And he and he said so also Klal Yisrael will be strong and not succumb. No woman, except for one, Shlomis Bas Givri, no woman succumbed to an Egyptian man. That's why later it would say, Leruveni Mishpachas, Leruve Mishpachas Haruveni, Lashim and Mishpachas Hashimoni, with a hey in the beginning and a yud at the end. Shem attached to Shem Ka, that we never succumbed to the temptations of the flesh. And Yaisa was giving Chayda. Or it could mean, literally, that he was able to uh, have a family and be strong and have a family in Mitzrayim. And so would Klal Yisrael. That's what it says, Kasher Yanu also. As much as they afflicted us, came Yerba Vachem Yifrites. We were powerful and we increased. And here, Yosef is giving a name, also Al Shem Ha'asid. As always, I want to thank you for joining us. I want to remind you to sponsor a share and get the schus of our Batsa Satyra in 187 countries all over the globe to all areas in the United States. Um, 718-916-3100 rmmwsi at aol.com I want to wish everybody a Zeus Hanukkah of a Gemar Toiv it should be a year of good health, happiness and everything wonderful and Ruchnius and Gashmias and uh, wish you to have a wonderful Shabbos